Hey everybody, it's Jay Kitchen from jaysbeard.com. I hope you're doing well today. We are doing one of our remembrances, memorials, obituaries, whatever you want to call them. Uh, people who have recently passed that have some importance to us and we think to the culture. Today we are going to be talking about Rodriguez. I think his, his real name was Sixto Rodriguez. But before we get into that, if you would be kind enough to subscribe to the channel, that would be really awesome. We would really appreciate that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to basically read or paraphrase the obituary that was posted in the New York Times shortly after Rodriguez passed, which was in August of 2023. And we'll be playing him live in performance. Uh, this is his song, I Wonder, and then after that is the tune, Sugar Man. So that will be in the background, so you get a taste of what his tunage is all about. Rodriguez was from Detroit. He wrote a lot of protest songs and very realistic imagery in his lyrics. He never really found an American audience, but for some reason, he really struck a chord, no pun intended, in Australia and particularly in South Africa, which kind of led to a late career resurgence which was captured in the Oscar-winning documentary called Searching for Sugar Man that was released in 2012. I highly recommend that you check that movie out. It's really very, it, it's fascinating. It's a very cool story, and it's probably on one of the streaming services. I'm sure you can find it, Searching for Sugar Man. The New York Times characterized his uh, story as a real-life tale of talent disregarded bad luck and missed opportunities with an improbable stop in the Hamptons and a Hollywood conclusion. So Rodriguez, who performed under just his last name, but whose full name was Sixto Diaz Rodriguez, was playing bars in Detroit in the late 60s. And his folk rock reminded those who heard it of Bob Dylan and then a producer signed him. The fellows who produced his first album, Dennis Coffey, was a big Detroit musician guy and Mike Theodore, they told of hearing Rodriguez at a particularly smoky establishment called The Sewer on the Detroit River where he was playing as he often did with his back to the audience. Maybe it forced you to listen to the lyrics because you couldn't see the guy's face, Coffee said. A single that he released under the name of Rod Riguez went nowhere. Cole Fact, released on the Sussex label, drew a smattering of favorable notices. Its first track, Sugar Man, gave the documentary its title. Rodriguez is a singing poet slash journalist telling stories of today, Jim Nippenberg wrote in the Cincinnati Inquirer. He does it with a voice much like Dylan's, very Dylan-esque imagery, and a musical backing dominated almost entirely by a guitar. But he's not a Dylan Carbon. Rodriguez is very much more explicit. Unfortunately, the album pretty much went unnoticed in the States, as did its follow-up a year later, coming from reality. Getting the records out was easy, Rodriguez told the Sydney Morning Herald of Australia in 1979. Getting them played was a lot harder. He was being interviewed by an Australian newspaper that year because while he'd settled into a life as a laborer and office worker in Detroit, though he still played bars and actually ran for office unsuccessfully, he had been developing fans overseas and he knew nothing about this. Australia was a place where his music had found an audience and in 79 he was invited to tour there. He returned in 81 for a few shows with the band Midnight Oil and released a live album in Australia. His music had found an even bigger following in, of all places, South Africa, where at the time, was still under the apartheid regime, essentially cut off from the rest of the world in a lot of respects. He had no idea how popular he was there, especially among white South Africans uncomfortable with apartheid and the country's rigidly conservative culture. To many of us South Africans, he was the soundtrack of our lives, Stephen Segerman, owner of a Cape Town record store, said in the documentary. In the mid-70s, if you walked into a random white, liberal, middle-class household that had a turntable on a pile of pop records, and if you flipped through the records, you'd always see Abbey Road by The Beatles, you'd always see Bridge Over Troubled Water by Simon and Garfunkel, and you'd always see Cold Fact by Rodriguez. To us, it was one of the most famous records of all time. The message it had was be anti-establishment. In the mid-80s, Segerman began trying to find out more about the mysterious artist known as Rodriguez and how he died. Rumors were rampant that he he had killed himself on stage, died of an overdose, and so on. He joined forces with a guy named Craig Bartholomew Sturdum, a journalist who was also searching for Rodriguez. Eventually they found him, still living in Detroit. A tour of South Africa in 1978 followed. 
with Rodriguez playing six sold-out shows at 5,000-seat arenas. He said it was strange seeing all these bright white faces, all of them knowing every word to every one of my songs, he told the Sunday Telegraph in Britain in 2009. After his South Africa tour, he played shows in England, Sweden, and other countries. And in the U.S., the label Light in the Attic re-released Cold Fact and Coming from Reality. In 2012, Malik Benjouli released Searching for Sugar Man, his first and only documentary. Unfortunately, he passed in 2014 to rave reviews. What you're seeing behind me is a recording of him playing in South Africa for the first times. So the film, which won the Oscar for Best Documentary Feature, concentrated on the search by Mr. Segerman and Bartholomew Sturdum, and it included an interview with Rodriguez. In the aftermath, found himself at the Hamptons International Film Festival and embarking on a fresh round of touring. Sixto Diaz Rodriguez was born on July 10, 1942 in Detroit. His mother, Maria, died when he was a boy. His father, Ramon, was a laborer who became a foreman at a steel plant. He said he started playing guitar at age 16. During his period of relative anonymity, after the release of his albums, he earned a bachelor's degree in philosophy at Wayne State University in Detroit. The Coming From Reality album includes a song called Cause, a lament about hard times and life's disappointments. Quote, they told me everybody's got to pay their dues, Rodriguez sings, and I explained that I had overpaid them. Close quote. In the 2009 interview with the Sunday Telegraph, he was more serene about his unusual career path. My story isn't a rags to riches story, he said. It's a rags to rags, and I'm glad about that. Where other people live in an artificial world, I feel I live in the real world, and reality beats everything. Rest in peace, Sixto Rodriguez. May your memory be a blessing. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please subscribe, stay lifted, stay well-groomed, and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.